Hello everybody, Isabella from Prior Attire here and today we are going to have another go at um, a project in a day thing or a dress in a day. Today it's going to be a corset in a day. Um, although it might be a two day project after all as I may be called back home early today so we'll see. I do need an 1850s corset um, for my photo shoot next week so it's a good excuse. I've already made one before based on Atta Yourself Ref D project um, which was great fun. Uh, you can find the pattern in her Etsy store. And I've made one before for my first book. So that's the first one. So I know what I'm doing more or less although I am going to use a slightly different technique than this one here. But I've made one so I need a slightly posher version. This is um, just all cotton. So, um, and it's also a little bit too big now. So I'm looking forward to making a new one. Um, the instructions on that are in my first book. So if you fancy having a go, get a pattern from um, Etsy and you have instructions there. So uh, we'll see how it goes. I will be adjusting the pattern pieces on the go. And I need to decide on the fabric now. Well, let's see what we have. So we have our fabrics. I haven't really decided which ones I want to use. Um, the cotton couture is going to be used for a strength layer. And that's a lovely quality couture from So Curvy. I've got quite a lot of it. So that's the important bit, because that's where all your strength comes, especially in a corset that is corded, so it doesn't have a lot of boning. And I have two options for the outside. Two different silks from um, the silk mills that I bought at a seller to bargain prices, and they're like five quid each, I think. And the cotton cotillion is actually much more expensive. Um, but they are all sort of flawed, as you can see this one. Or maybe you can't see the slight difficult has a line running through them but also both of them have been in storage for too long and they have creases and marks that um, no amount of steaming is able to get out of so it's not really useful for a bigger piece of clothing but it um, shouldn't go to waste and I don't really mind a little bit of creasing on my corset so well you know, a few quid of nice quality silk and a few creases. I don't mind that. And that will make a few corsets too. So, I don't know. That's the most difficult part. <laughs> we'll see. Um, and I'm also tempted to use one of my original busks from that era. I've got several ones and I think the longest one should do. So that's one of the original busks with lovely clasps, but also, if you see, the bottom clasp is opposite. It's just like offsetting hooks and eyes. Actually, this is a wrong size. Oh, hold on. Better. There you go. That's the match. 27 inch, 27 centimeters. So offsetting the bottom hook on the belly um, actually prevents the corset for, from opening up unexpectedly, not that it ever really happens, but it does apparently. And as you can see, the busk is already pre-bent to accommodate the belly curve. The 50s corsets are not particularly long, 660s is the same really. They start getting much longer when the hips are more emphasised, but because we are wearing crinolines and, and big skirts, you can't really see the, the hips, so it's not really that, that important. They're really sort of long and streamlined natural form era um, garments with queer ass bodices do need long corsets to, to accentuate that but earlier not so much so I might I might just use this 26, 27. and I've got lots of cording because we need to cord and I'll be using some synthetic boning and possibly some metals for the back so Let's 
sharpen the chalk and get on with it. Let's see how much time it will take. Right, um, we've cut all the pieces cut out um, and you might also notice that the original corset has um, shoulder straps but I've decided to discard them mostly because I've noticed as I'm wearing it that I just stuff them up the back and don't use them at all um, so I'm just going to save myself some work and not do the shoulder straps. Um, so the pieces are cut out in couture um, the couture layer is the one that you have to be careful how you cut because that's the shape of the corset. The silk, however, as you can see, the pieces are bigger. This is mostly because as you cord, you will find that the cording of the top eats the fabric. I cord it a little bit here as an example when I couldn't decide on a fabric. So this, let me see if you can see. So this will eat up your fabric um, and it's, some people say add one inch or two all around, really up to you and how much fabric you have and how much cording it's going to be. So here there's only a little bit of cording at the back so I don't add much more than an inch. There's much more cording in the front which is, which makes for a much bigger piece. But also it means that I have to be careful how I am inserting the um, gauze so that they align with the lining as well or with the strength layer. So, uh, well, let's, uh, that's a difficult bit, so let's keep it for later. Let us start with the back because I like doing the back. And I actually noticed I've already made a mistake. There you go. Now the backs are stitched together, clipped over, pressed and for the eyelet support I usually find it's beneficial to put one or two layers in as well so that the eyelets actually have something to bite into so they will not be ripped out very easily when under stress. So let us do our backs. Nice and easy. And see how it goes. You see what I meant about marks that has been pressed and steamed and nothing. So, well, hopefully it will be hidden underneath the cording. Right. Let's stitch the backs. The backs are ready and the eyelets are inserted so they'll be ready for cording. But before we start to do that, let's worry about the gauze and the insertion. So, oops. it 
really helps to press the seam allowances of the gauze before working on them. It just makes life so much easier. You have to do that both on the strength layer and on the silk layer. Um, there are many, very ways of inserting gauze. This is my favourite ones. Mostly because then when you have a gore, it's much easier to top stitch around. edges are already folded under. So we will be doing that first for all the layers and then top stitching all the gauze in. Probably the most hateful part of the whole process but hey, it has to be done. So let's do it. Right, we have the gauze set up, most of them, not all of them. As you can see, I always want gauze to be. That's the lining and has all the gauze in. The fashion layer, the silk, doesn't, mostly because I sort of mark the where the gauze theoretically should be, but that part is corded, so the fabric is likely to move. So I'm going to cut it first and then see whether that may need to move a little bit out of the way. So um, that's going to be a bit of a challenge. Busk is going to be next. So normally I would be stitching out... Where is the... This bit with... That bit for one side for the slots, one side for the studs, but obviously these are offset. So one side will have to be marked with three slots and one stud and the other one opposite. I haven't done that before, that's going to be fun. Oh my God. Right, let's um, do the busk. I'm using two machines. I'm going to just run the, and connect the fronts on this one and then press the seams open and go to my next machine, which is perpetually set with a zipper foot for cording and corsetry, because I'm just too lazy to change my foot on this one. But also the other one actually has a bit more um, variety in moving the foot as well, so it serves my purpose better. So there you go, maybe I'm not that lazy after all. Right, let's do it.
while the busk is in, as you can see, and we see that our seams are aligning. So now I'm just going to add additional bone on both sides of the busk. The original doesn't have it, but since the busk is antique, I sort of want to enforce it a little bit more. So it will be reinforced with additional steel here. And then I'm going to mark my cording. There will be a bone here and the cording over there. The belly area is going to be boned, uh, sort of corded a little bit differently in the original. The corded pattern is basically nice sort of half moon and then just a few bits. Um, I think I'm just going to have a double bit of that half moon just to make it a little bit different. And once that part and this part is done I can actually see whether the gore goes where it should go <laughs> and um, put the gore in and continue recording for that piece. Well. Let's do it. We have the front panel, the thread will be taken care of later. It's been sort of trimmed to what it should be. And I'm going to add the second panel in the sandwich method. Um, you can make panels all separately and cork them all separately. Uh, and that's the method I describe in my book. Here is a sandwich method which I describe in my second book. But basically it means I'm going to sandwich the front piece between the next piece. I'm going to stitch it through and back and then start cording this one as well so that the seam is um, nicely sandwiched in really um, and you can use that seam here to make um, a boning channel as well which I'm going to do. So let's be about it.
the main body of the corset is now ready. The back is ready as well. Now, because back is already finished, you cannot really sandwich the seam here as well. You can do it if you wanted to, um, but that means doing all the eyelets, etc., at the very end, which is also possible. It's just not the way I prefer things. So this seam was just going to be a standard seam our uh, bone inside. Um, it also will give me a little bit more opportunity to regulate sizing if I find out that, for example, it's a little bit too big. I can always take it in a little bit more on that particular seam. So um, yeah, we're sort of halfway through. It's a bit boring. We need to have good music on. Um, I will be doing the second bit tomorrow after all because I do need to go back home now. It's uh, it's going to be a two day make then. But um, and I'm not going to film the other side because I'll be just doing the very same thing just um, symmetrical. So I will most likely just pick up once both sides are ready and I'll be doing some binding and flossing and decoration. So hey, lots of cording. Lip two, and we have a second half. It still needs lots of tidying up a little bit with all those threads that will need to be brought to the inside. It needs flossing. But now uh, I've got the same fabric, the same silk used as bias strips for binding. So I'm going to bind the lower edge, then bone the channels and um, bind the other edge and it's basically mostly done. The rest is just hand sewing, putting lace and, and flossing on. So let's do it. Corset is sort of ready, at least ready for fitting. It will have some lace on, and I need to secure all the gauze so to do some flossing as well. But I think this one's going to go on. Now, there is a problem with it. Um, I made it smaller than my old one because I've lost some weight, so I made it two inches smaller. already closes completely which actually provides quite a nice support especially since I suffer from constant chondritis um, but I've got loads of more here to squeeze um, so I will see I may keep it or I may, I may sell it I'll see how it goes but I'm quite pleased with how the fabric worked for it so now just hand finishing and putting some lace on um, may not be able to um, all of that because it will be at home usually watching the telly in the evening when I put do, do my hand stitching and then next week I'll have a photo shoot so I will get some close-ups and photo shoot thank you for watching so that's the finished corset I have done some bits of it at home without videoing because it was awkward 
as I do things like that watching the telly. Um, so I've flossed the bones and finished up the gauze. As you can see, the bits are just reinforcement of the gauze so that they would not burst too easily. But apart from all, it's a little bit big, but apart from that, it's a fabulous corset, so a win, done in two days, sort of. And a nice antique bosque, okay? Mm.